Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about atomic radius and how to find it using the closest approach method. Now this method originally uh, was the original way that we estimated the atomic radius of an atom and it's all about firing a particle, a charged particle and importantly a positively charged particle at the nucleus of the atom and hypothesising how close it would get. This, of course, has um, problems with it, and I will go to those at the end of this video. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about this closest approach, because it's really useful not only for nuclear physics, but for electric, uh, electric uh, fields as well. So what I've got here is I've got an uh, alpha particle that is being shot at this nucleus of this gold atom. Uh, that I know it's gold because it's got 79 protons in it with 4.9 mega electron volts of energy. And I want to know how close it can get. Now, what's actually happening is that it is a positive charge going into the field of a positive, um, a positive um, charge as well, which means it's repelling. So what I'm trying to find is the point where the field from the gold is going to provide the exact amount of energy to kick it out as the energy that I'm being pulled in. Now, an easy way to visualize what's happening, if you get two norths of a magnet and you push them together, you push one together slowly, you get this kind of repulsion. And this is because you are not giving enough energy to literally bring them together. You're actually only giving enough energy to get a certain distance away in the field. So you get to the point where the field is repelling with the same amount of energy you're putting in. And this is the exact same thing. I want to find the point where the energy that I'm putting into the, um, trying to push it together, is actually the energy that the field is trying to pull me away with. And I can do this in two ways. I'm going to use both methods. So I'm actually going to use the idea of potential. And this is the one that I may do in the exam. Now, potential is energy per unit something of the field. And in case of electric fields, it is energy per unit charge. So I'm finding when the potential of the alpha particle here equals the potential of the gold. So the information I know about this alpha particle is I actually know how much energy it has. So alpha is energy over charge. I know it has got 4.9 mega electron volts. The first thing you're going to do with anything like this is you need to convert it into joules. So. 4.9 times 10 to the 6 is how many electron volts I have. Times that by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and I'll get how many joules I have. So 4.9 times 10 to the 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and I have an answer of 7.84 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. Okay. So to find the potential of this alpha particle, how much potential this alpha particle on its own has... I need to take that energy, 7.84 times 10 to the minus 13 over the charge of the alpha particle. Now, an alpha particle has two protons and two neutrons, so 2 times the charge on a proton, so 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and that equals quite a big one here, 2.45 times 10 to the 6 joules per coulomb. So that is the potential of the alpha particle. Now I want this potential to be equal in the um, gold. But I actually don't know much information about the gold here. I know it is a radial field, and I know the formula for a radial field is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r. This is actually quite useful because this has the distance in there, there. So what I'm doing is find the point where the alpha particle, the potential from the alpha, is equal to the potential of the gold. So I've calculated my potential. So I know that this formula is going to be four, uh, 2.45 times 10 to the 6 equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. If you put that on your calculator, you get 8.99 times 10 to the 9. So epsilon naught is on your data sheet and is 6.65 times 10 to the minus 24. 
32 seconds. I'm just going to grab a data sheet and then I'll we'll clarify that for you. Oops. Because I don't want to get it wrong for you. Do, do, do. Point eight five times ten to the minus twelve. I do apologise. So this here is eight point eight five times ten to the minus twelve. So this leaves us eight point nine nine times ten to the nine times by the charge of this uh, gold, which is seventy nine times one point six times ten to the minus nineteen, all over R. So my R, this distance of my closest approach, is going to be eight point nine nine times ten to the nine times 79 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by my potential and I get an answer of 4.64 times 10 to the minus 14 meters okay <coughs> so that is looking at potential what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at it in a slightly different way which might make a little bit more sense to some of you I'm going to look at this idea of energy, which is related to potential. And incidentally, it does bring out the same formula. It's just a slightly different approach to the equation situation. So like I said before, it's the amount of potential, is the amount of energy that this idea of closest approach is when I'm putting the energy in and the field is repelling me with the exact same amount of energy. And so I've calculated the amount of energy I'm putting in. And so I'm working out when the field is going to be repelling me with the same amount of energy. Now, the formula for energy, the base formula, is work done is force times distance. And the force that is causing my repulsion is the force due to electrostatics, so Coulomb's law. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to replace this. I'm going to have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times by Q alpha, Q of the gold, all over r squared times by my distance. And of course, the distance is the radius squared. It's the distance between them both. So these that would cancel out with that there. OK, so I'm just going to rub it out there. OK, so I'm going to put my data into this formula. This, this formula here that I'm just using work done. So I know the energy is 7.84 times 10 to the minus 13 equals, like I said before, this uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Q of the alpha is 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, times by the charge, so 79 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, all over R. So R is going to be this divided by this. So let's put this into my calculator. So 8.99 times 10 to the 9, times by 2, times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, times by 79, times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay, and then divide that all by 7.84 times 10 to the minus 13. And I get an answer, amazingly, that R equals 4.8. 6, 4 times 10 to the minus 14 metres. Exactly the same answer as I got here. So for some of you, this approach of using the idea of energy, that it's, I'm trying to find the point when the energy that I'm putting in is the same as the energy that the field is trying to kick me out with. You're more than welcome to do this method here. However, the exam in other questions may ask you, uh, to use potential, and this is where you could do potential here. Okay, so the idea that the potentials are equal. Now, this was the initial idea of closest approach. This is how we estimated the radius of the atom. But there are a few problems with this. Not only, okay, so issues, not only which is a negative here, is that different speeds 
of particle yield different results. The other negative about this is it doesn't take into consideration any neutrons. This is only interested in the positive charges because it's all about repulsion. I could have some uranium-235-92 and some other elements. So let's say I had uh, thorium, but that also had an uh, atomic mass number of 235. The thorium would give a slightly different closest approach value because it has a slightly different charge to uranium. So this, uh, this method only considered protons. Now, don't get me wrong, it was quite useful in its time using this idea that as the proton number got bigger, the approach that I could get would get, of course, bigger too. And you can see that with this formula here, that if this charge got bigger here, my radius would also get bigger. So there was a nice relationship between the idea of the more positive charges I had, the further... I, the, the, the further the distance of this atom would be. But the problem is it didn't account for things like um, carbon. So carbon-12 and carbon-14 have the same radius because they have the same charges, even though they're slightly different because they have slightly different amount of atomic mass in them. And that there is the method of finding the radius using the closest approach. This could come up in electric fields, and it also could come in nuclear radius as well.